Hey guys, I'm going to read a book to you that is named Disney Pixar Monsters, Inc. All children know that there are monsters in their bedrooms at, and at night. Those monsters will come out and scare them. What children don't know is that monsters are just doing their jobs. Monsters need to scare children and collect their screams. The monsters then turn the screams into electricity for the city of Monsterpolis, where the monsters live. Early one morning, a furry blue monster named James P. Sullivan Sully, and his best friend, a one-eyed monster named Mike, were walking through Monsterpolis. They were on their way to work at Monsters, Inc., where Sully was the best scarer at Monsters, Inc. had ever had. Mike was his assistant. Mike and Sully stopped in the lobby of Monsters, Inc. Happy birthday, Mike said to his girlfriend, Celia. Oh, googly woogly, you remembered, Celia said happily. Mike was taking her out to dinner that evening, and she knew he had picked a great restaurant. Then, Sully and Mike went up to, to the workers' locker room to get ready for work. All of a sudden... A large chameleon-like monster named Randall appeared out of nowhere. Ah! shouted Mike. Surprised Mike. Randall could make himself invisible by blending into any background. But he was jealous of Sully. Randall wanted to be the best scarer at Monsters, Inc. And he was determined to beat Sully somehow. Mike and Sully left the locker room and went to the scare floor. There, there lots of monsters had gathered in front of a long row of doors. Those were the doors that let the monsters into the bedrooms of children in the human world. Red lights were lit above the doors to show that they were ready. It was time for the scarers to begin. The monsters headed for the doors. Hey, may the best monster win, said Sully. I plan to, snarled Randall. Randall quickly scared a lot of kids and collected a lot of screams. His assistant, Fungus, proudly pointed to the scoreboard. But that day, Sully opened the door to a children's slumber party. He scared all the children there collecting more screams from a single door than any other monster. He was still the top scarer at Monsters, Inc. Suddenly, someone shouted, 2319, we have a 2319. A child shock has been spotted on the back of a monster named George. 2319 meant that special agents from the Child Detection Agency, the CGA, had to come. They had to decontaminate George. After all, every monster knows that children and their things are toxic. Soon, the workday was over. Just as Mike was about to leave with Celia, a monster named Roz stopped him. Roz was the monster in charge of paperwork. Mike had forgotten to hand in his scare reports again. Sully told Mike that he would take care of it for him. So while Mike left with Celia, Sully headed back to collect Mike's paperwork. Back on the scare floor, Sully felt something. It was a little girl grabbing his tail. Like all other monsters, he was terrified of kids. They were considered even more toxic than their socks. Kids were not allowed in Monsterpolis. Panicking, Sully tried to find the right door so he could put the little girl back in her room. But the little girl wasn't scared of Sully at all. Kitty, she called to him. 
she wanted to play. So he finally managed to put her in a duffel bag. But just then, he spotted Randall. So he quickly hid. He couldn't let anyone find about this. So he didn't know what to do. So he went to find Mike. Mike wasn't happy about having his romantic dinner with Celia interrupted. And he was terrified when the little girl crept out of the bag. He was, wasn't the only one. Monsters everywhere began to panic and scream. Mike and Sully managed to whisk the girl away before CGA agents arrived at the restaurant. No one saw Mike and Sully take the child home, but their problems were not over. Helicopters had begun to search the city for the little girl. Mike and Sully tried to come up with a plan to get her back to her own bedroom. In the meantime, they needed to keep her happy, but not too happy. Whenever the girl laughed, she caused a power, power surge that lit up all the lights. If that kept happening, it would be easy for the CEA agents to find her. Eventually, the girl fell asleep. By now, Sully was less afraid of her. He was actually growing fond of her. Perhaps children were dangerous, weren't dangerous after all. Mike, however, wasn't so sure. He couldn't wait until she was back home. The next morning, they disguised her as a little monster and brought her back to Monsters Inc. The trial had to walk right past their boss, Mr. Waternose, while he was talking to a CEA agent. So he quickly headed for the locker room with the little girl. He began to play hide and seek with her. He even gave her a nickname. Boo, what are you doing? Mike asked Sully when he entered the room. Uh, I'm looking for the kid, answered Sully. You lost it? Asked Mike in disbelief. Suddenly, Boo ran and jumped into Sully's arms. Just then, they heard a noise. It was Randall and his assistant, Fungus. The trial quickly hit. Fungus held the newspaper. It's on the front page, he said. The child, the one you were after. Randall sa said to act as if nothing had to happen and to take care of the machine. Randall would deal with the monster who had let the kid in, into Monster Polis. Mike and Sully could could tell that Randall was up to something. But what? But Mike and Sully had more important things on their minds. They managed to sneak Boo up to the scarab floor so they could put her back in her bedroom. They just had to find the right door. Suddenly, Sully was getting ready to say goodbye when he told Mike to wait. He didn't have the right door. What are you talking about? Of course it's her door, insisted Mike. While they were arguing, Boo wandered off. Unfortunately, as Sully and Mike searched for Boo, they ran straight into Randall. So what did you think of that kid getting out, Sullivan? Pretty crazy, huh? Randall said. Oh yeah, Sully said slowly. Crazy, ha <laughs> ha. Then Celia appeared. Last night was one of the worst nights of my entire life, she shouted at Mike. Randall listened in, looking at his paper closely. He spotted Mike in the picture at the restaurant where the kid had been seen. Suddenly, Randall realized that Mike and Sully had the kid. Mike could see what was coming, so he tried to run away. But Randall soon caught up with him. Where's the kid? He demanded, pushing Mike up against the wall. I don't know, 
Mike sputtered. But Randall didn't believe him. He told Mike that he'd meet him at the kids' door when all the other monsters left for lunch. But he'd better make sure the girl was there so they could get her back to the human world. Meanwhile, Sully was still searching for Boo. He rounded a corner just in time to see her fall into a trash can. No! shouted as two monsters wheeled the can up to a compactor. By the time Sully reached the compactor room, everything but one eye stalk had been crushed into a tiny shoe. Sully was heartbroken. Mike caught up with his friend. Sully, great news, buddy. I got us a way out of this mess. But we gotta hurry. Where is... But before Mike could finish, they heard the sound of Boo's voice. She hadn't been crushed after all. With a smile, Sully hugged Boo tightly. Mike, S Mike, Sully, and Boo hurried back to the scare floor. Boo's door was in Randall's station, just as Randall had promised, but Sully came to a sudden halt. Randall? They couldn't trust Randall. He was after Boo. Mike was sure that everything was safe to prove. He entered Boo's room and jumped up and down on her bed. Just then, a box snapped clo close closed over Mike. It was a trap. Sully and Boo hid while Randall grabbed the box and loaded it onto a cart, thinking it was Boo. Randall carried the box away. Sully had to do something to help his pal. He also needed to see what Randall was up to. So he and Boo followed Randall, but they soon lost him. Luckily, Boo discovered a secret passageway. At the end of the passageway, they found Randall's secret lab in it. He had a machine that could suck the screams out of a child. But now it was Mike who was strapped to the machine. Randall was furious. He wanted to know where the little girl was. Of course Mike wouldn't tell him. Just then, Sully pulled out a m m the machine's plug. And he, Boo, and Mike managed to get away. The three friends raced down the hall. Mike was desperate to escape, but Sully had another idea. He decided to go to Mr. Waternose, his own old friend, for, for help. Mike explained about Randall's even evil plan to take screams from children with his machine. To their surprise, Waternose picked up Boo. Then he pushed Sully and Mike out through a huge metal door into the human world. Mike was furious. Oh, what a great idea, he shouted at Sully. Going to your old pal Waternose? Too bad he was in on the whole thing. But Sully could think only of saving Boo, and he knew they couldn't go back the way they had come. Suddenly, a giant shadow covered the ground. They looked up to see a creature that looked just like about scary as they did. He was called the Yeti, the Abominable Snowman. The Yeti told Sully that there was a village nearby. This gave Sully an idea. If he found a child's bedroom, it might lead him back to Monster Polis. Quickly, he built a sleigh from supplies in the Yeti's cave uh, and set off. Mike was too angry with Sully, so he stayed behind. In no time, Sully found a child's bedroom and was back at M Monsters, Inc. He raced down the passageway and led to Randall's secret lab. Suddenly, Sully heard 
Boo's frightened noise close by. Boo, I'm here. Where are you? Whispered Sally. Sally was horrified to find Boo strapped to the scream machine, more frightened than ever before. Sally roared in, smashed the machine, and rescued Boo. The machine crashed to the ground and slid into water nose and fungus, pinning them to the wall. Stop wasting time! Finish them off! Water nose shouted at Randall as Sally and Boo escaped. So Sally and an invisible Randall fought furiously over Boo. In the middle of the fight, Mike came back, just in time to hit Randall with a snowball. This made Randall just invisible. Just visible enough that Sally could punch him. Then Sally ran down to the hallway with Mike and Boo. The trio reached the scare floor with Randall right behind them. Then Sally had an idea. They raced up to the moving doorways. Sally told Mike to make Boo laugh. As as Boo laughed, all the red do door lights lit up. Sally, Mike, and Boo jumped back and forth through different doors, hoping to lose Randall. But Randall finally caught Blue, Boo, and fled. Sally followed him and found Boo alone. When Sally ran to her, Randall attacked. Boo was afraid, but she had to help, so she grabbed Randall's tail and bit him. That was all Sally needed. He threw Randall through another door that led into the human world, never to be heard from again. Back on the scare floor, Mr. Waternose and a group of CEA agents were waiting for them. Suddenly, Mike had an idea. He took Boo's costume and ran as fast as he could. The agents, believing the costume to be Boo, began to chase Mike, chasing Mike. In the commotion, Sally and Boo managed to get away. Mr. Waternose finally caught up with Sally and Boo. In his anger, he told them that the city of Montepolis didn't have enough energy, so they had to find an alternative to scary. He wanted to kidnap kids from the human world and extract their screams with the machine. That was why Randall had been looking for Boo. I'll kidnap a thousand children before I let this company die, Mr. Waternose vowed. But Roz, who turned to be the C to be the CEA boss, had overhead his confession and Mr. Waternose was taken away by the CEA agents. Finally, it was time to send Boo home. Sally took her to her room and tucked her into bed. Nothing's coming to scare you anymore, right? He said. Boo smiled. Goodbye, Boo, he whispered. Slowly, Sally crossed in, into the door. He looked back at Boo, who watched him from the bed. Quietly, Sally closed the door behind him. Back in the scare room, two CEA agents moved, moved in. They shredded Boo's door and took it away. Sadly, Sully picked up a small piece of the door. At least he had this to remind him of Boo. Mike knew how much Sully already missed Boo. Come on, pal, cheer up, he said as they left Monsters, Inc. We got Boo home. Sure, we're both out of a job, but hey, at least we got some laughs along the way. Slowly, a smile spread across Sully's face. Mike had just given him an idea. Time passed and Sully turned the scream floor into a laugh floor. There, monsters made kids laugh instead of scream to get energy. Boo had showed them that laughter was ten times as powerful as screams. 
the energy crisis was over in Monstropolis. Still, Sully had missed his little friend Boo. So one day, Mike glued her entire door back together. That way, Sully could visit Boo whenever he liked. And that's what he just did. The